the upright, two-legged, eight-faced, brain-heavy land octopus, <laughs> ink-blotted with expressionlessness, the Rorschach-faced plastic people, the flesh mannequins in assembly line costumes, sitting in rows, reading in columns, leaning on a y-axis, bar graphing their loneliness, heads weighed down by apathy. They wear it like a pair of hoop earrings, their perspiring sass. It smells funny, like cheap cologne, like stale water. That one, that one's a light junkie, all revved up and running on color, been praying for an instruction manual, begging for a blueprint, been treadmilling in a minefield, still afraid of getting their spot blown up, wishing upon a supernova. That one is dreaming in public again, even though I told him not to, sleeping through an avalanche, quicksanding in their thoughts again, apologizing for apologizing for apologizing, sorrier than a heated debate about the nature of believing things, leaving blisters on our super egos, can't, on our super egos, can't Anchor sores on our upper ids. They bubble like overheated nihilism. They, they melted the reflection right out of the narcissist. Their mirrors come up empty now. Their faces look like cupcakes. Their eyes are steaming teacups. We just want to lick the frosting, soak the bitten tips of our crumbling biscuits. We don't care if it's not our cup of tea. Caffeine is caffeine. That one's staring awkwardly. Get them to sign along the dotted line. Their edges are too perforated to sit upon. There's something tearing them apart. That one's got an argument calling out of their pie chart hole. Never mind, it's just their inner bureaucracy trying to make a run for it. But contractually, they're obligated. I recognize that fingerprint. It looks like swirls of cinnamon. I see some dotless eyes and crossless T's, a, a moth nibbling hearts right off of sleeves. I found them, just as lost as me, calculating the cost of free, forced to be what they're forced to be. That one's got an audience inside his head. They're booing him. That one hears applause inside his heart. He wonders if it's genuine. You see that glimmer reflecting on the top corner of all their foreheads? They don't really shine like that. That's just pesticide, excessive pride from being harvested on uneven soil. They're not smiling. Look at how their brows decline. They're not making sense. That's just you filling in the blanks again, making infinity by tipping over the number eight, turning watermarks into di deities, interpreting the ink blocks inside their irises. Thank you. Oh. That was relatively new. This one is, is I've done it a couple of times, but, uh, you know, uh, I wrote it because uh, I listened to so many of the Ancient Mariner's stories, and, you know, it's, it's pretty inspiring, and I wanted to catch the cadence of it. So this one's about, you know, like, sex, and it's got humor in it. White lady! <laughs> the one and only time I ever made love was under the candlelit dimness of a cliché. Amidst a floating mosaic of rose petals plucked by the minute hands of an ultimatum in a bathtub on my birthday, I was sweating profusely. She had been cooking for me all of her favorite foods. <laughs> the oven was breathing heavily all over her apartment. I was waiting for her, sitting in the still water, naked, her favorite R&B songs filling the chicken-scented air. I was leaned over the edge of the bathtub. I slapped the floor with my left hand, killed a small cockroach that tried to make a scurry for it from out of the cabinet below the bathroom sink. I used my thumb to flick it from palm to toilet. I rinsed my hand in the bath water. She finally appeared in the doorway wearing nothing but hair extensions and a tongue ring. She spun around in front of me, Still leaned over the edge of the tub, I traced the butterfly tattoo on her lower back. I ran my index finger from calf to inner thigh. She looked at me over her shoulders, raised her eyebrows and flared her nostrils. I squeezed her ass cheek hard with the same hand I'd killed the roach with. <laughs> she entered the tub like she didn't want to disturb the hydrogen in the water. We kissed like we were trying to paint each other's tongues. We did not speak in words. My erection was poking out of the water like the dorsal fin of a great white shark. <laughs> I read the braille around her nipples with my tongue. It tasted like satire. <laughs> we embraced, rubbed soapy flesh slowly until the tea light candle flames died out. No one came. 
<laughs> no one came. When we got out of the tub, we got about halfway through dinner before finally we fucked. <laughs>